as you stated, I work for one of the top five uh, financial um, banks in Canada. And uh, in my role, my official role is known as a senior learning experience designer. Um, but in the industry, it's also referred to as an instructional designer. Uh, so what that essentially means is that I am the uh, learning expert or professional that uh, the company calls upon and anytime there is a learning initiative or a training initiative that needs to be uh, rolled out to the um, corporate workforce, uh, I would come in, I would assess the needs of the project, um, the behavioral, uh, the knowledge, uh, the, the skills that are required for the training, um, and then I would design it. I would design uh, the, the, the training experience, and that could be in the form of it being an in-class training. Uh, it could be virtual e-learning. Uh, sometimes it's to call, it's, I'm called in to develop a supplementary um, uh, material for uh, the, uh, the workforce to be able to do their jobs better. So uh, when I come in, I assess, I design, come up with a, a design plan and storyboard what it is that I need to do. Um, and then I develop it. Once it's approved, then I develop the actual learning material or the experience that needs to happen. And uh, then I'm re responsible for implementing that so that uh, it gets rolled out to the workforce. And uh, the area that I work in primarily uh, affects uh, the overall customer uh, experience, customer service experience, and, uh, and also workforce engagement. So my role is really to take learning um, that drives the company's strategic uh, goals and uh, and targets, and I uh, create experiences that are engaging, um, that are targeted, um, and that are also impactful, so that it uh, ends up um, showing up in the way that the workforce uh, behaves and, and the way they perform their jobs. So um, that's that's my role, and uh, anything related to learning or training, um, I'm the person that they would call on to develop that particular experience. Design to me is everything. Um, because uh, design is everywhere, in everything, in every facet of our lives, um, whether we realize it or not. So design to me is something that touches everything. And when you are a designer, regardless of what discipline you're in, whether it's interior design, graphic design, industrial design, uh, in my case, instructional design, fashion design, uh, you're a problem solver. And you're being called upon uh, with your talents and your expertise to assess a situation. And I look at it in two parts. Uh, being a, a design, uh, it's an opportunity to solve a problem that exists, um, and or to make a product or an experience better than it currently is. Or design is something uh, where you're tasked to create something that has never been done before, and it could be something that's completely new um, and, uh, and, and and revolutionary. And, and, and those are all very exciting um, sort of opportunities to be able to, to be a part of. So when I think about design, number one, I think uh, of us as problem solvers, and I think of us uh, as uh, the experts who are able to kind of come in and take something and, and to be able to enhance it to either work better, um, to look more engaging, um, and, and whatever it is that we're designing, the end result is for it to be have, have some sort of uh, meaningful, real-world application. Being someone who's a creative or someone who's an artistic was always part of who I was. Um, it was part of my early identity from the time that I was in, in, in junior high school and taking art class and, and you know, I guess getting certain you know, uh, bits of uh, attention from you know my instructor or my peers as to the type of work that I was producing. So I knew that it was always something that was part of me and it was something uh, that I uh, needed to find a way to, to exercise and, and, and cultivate. Um, and the beauty of OCAD was that it was a community of creatives and, and experts and people who are in the industry, people who are trying to get into various industries uh, it, it was a place for me to go to after my, my high school, as far as post-secondary education. Um, so it was really, really exciting to know that there was a place where I could feel welcome um, and that I could start to now formalize a lot of the natural abilities that I demonstrated in, in my earlier years, um, you know, by going to a place where I can take a lot of my natural talents and abilities and begin to formalize it and begin to put it into context. Because um, a lot of the things that I was, I was doing naturally, I didn't really know exactly what it was until I got to school. So um, all of the, the teachers and, and the professors that I had at OCAD allowed me to be able to formalize uh, those skills and those talents and for me to be able to uh, put it into context. So uh, I graduated from the communication and design program at, uh, at OCAD U. 
And um, since leaving, I, you know, obviously I think for any, anyone who graduates uh, any post-secondary education, your number one thought is, okay, you know, obviously wanting to make money. You want to make a, a living uh, doing what you love. Uh, for myself, I always uh, made sure that I needed to maintain some sort of employment uh, outside of whatever I did with my art practice because I, I recognized very early on in order for me to be able to do the things that I wanted to do, I needed to have a steady stream of income. Um, so I, I always maintained uh, a, a job uh, in the professional sector, private sector, while I still had the opportunity to work on building my art practice in parallel with that. Um, so I started very early building the infrastructure for, for you know, what is now my business. So things like obviously producing work and having enough uh, of a catalog of work that I could uh, then develop a website. From the website, um, then they started obviously, you know, developing my social media, um, started self-producing a lot of my own art shows, uh, being a participant artist in a lot of collaborative art shows and events around the city. Um, so just constantly just working on my on my practice on my my paintings um, and evolving my style and my my artistic voice and uh, Yeah, and, and fortunately I was uh, in a situation where um, I was able to start selling reproductions of my work because I, I found a market or an audience for people who loved uh, to collect my work and follow my work uh, so that became something that started making me realize that this is something that I can actually start um, uh, mobilizing and, and, and monetizing for myself because obviously I love to create work and, and, and create artwork but I, I obviously want to get paid like any other artist does. Leap into it, absolutely. Just jump in with both feet and, uh, and trust yourself. If you know that you have uh, uh, an intrinsic um, you know, motivation inside you to get your voice out, to, to, to show the world why you're different or you're unique um, or the things that you can do, um, or you feel that you have something strong to say that could eventually evolve into something even greater, then OCAD is the place you need to go because I think it's so important um, that people start to recognize the importance that creativity and design have in everything that we do. And it's not, it's not something that, that should be perceived as being a vocational or a hobby. These are very, very serious professions where you have a lot of highly skilled individuals and in so many disciplines uh, in, in so many across so many different industries that need people who are creative that need people with, that have talent to be able to see things differently to be able to problem solve to be able to create something that's never been created before